thank you very much for uh, for invitation and I'm always glad to come to Maribor I always have great great plans how I'm going to stay here go to Tririvnik enjoy your new uh, tea house near uh, near the beginning of the park but then I'm faced with reality that I need to go back home quickly the same as today Dunya who invited me here uh, I'm not here for the first time I, oh, we cooperate on open science issues. Um, I approach uh, the topic from uh, intellectual property rights, well, mainly copyright. So also today, these selected topics, I narrowed down considerably my task for today. So I'm going to talk briefly about I IPRs and then special um, dedication will be on Creative Commons licenses, and then exceptions and limitations in copyright. And of course, I will spend some time uh, on new copyright reform here in Slovenia, because this is happening right now. And so I would like to know how many people are here, not Matija, who is a lecturer, and not Dunja, who is organizer, and not Brina, but uh, the students attending the summer school. How many are Slovenians? Yes, Slovenians. Only. A few of us, of a few of you. Um, thank you. So that will be a special um, attention for you because I, f I believe that you need to know what's going on right now. But I will present it in a manner that all the rest will also learn about copyright issues and text and data mining, which is a new research method in research and science. Um, so um, this is a bit annoying. So we are recording the whole session. I hope you're going to cut a couple of comments that I'm going to make in between. Uh, I forget that I'm recorded. I prefer to be in a class and have some sort of discussion with you. I also um, learned that you come from Hungary, Portugal, uh, which, which Serbia, Croatia, Belgium, Germany. Greece, we always say Greece <laughs> and Croatia <laughs> because of the sea and sun. Uh, any any other countries? Poland. Poland. I'm sorry, I didn't. Uh, any others? Hungary. I already said. Macedonia. Any anyone from uh, New Australia? <laughs> oh, no. So, uh, compliments to the summer school. Uh, New Zealand is here. No. <laughs> okay. Uh, I need to see the time because I, I, we will stop at half past 11. Um, but we will cover everything that I plan to cover. So, we'll just proceed. Also, like, please do interrupt me with questions. If I will not find it proper time to answer, I will ignore your, your hand. Don't worry about that. But otherwise, if I'll, um, especially when we'll talk about IPR, RPRs, which will be very quick and brief, uh, please um, don't, don't, uh, don't hesitate to ask questions. Another question before I start. Have you ever studied intellectual property rights or law or anything? Okay, okay. So, I, you will not learn everything today. You will actually not be able to give yourselves any answer in the area of intellectual property rights. You will be just able to detect that there are potentially some issues and that you need to consult lawyer. That's, that's the main rule in, in law. Lawyers can and master law. Other scientists and researchers, it's very good that they understand legal questions, that they can ask questions to lawyers. That's very important because in law, the word, sometimes even the letter makes a difference, huge difference, so it's, it's important that you consult with the with expert. So agenda for today, finally we are here first. I'm going to spend 
like little amount of, of time on open research, open science, because the title of my talk is open research, but you talk all the time about open science. So we'll discuss this very quickly. And then I will mention building blocks of open science, because there we already see or feel the importance of IPR. And then also in the next topic, advantages and disadvantages of open science. I know that you have some very interesting lectures when you will be presented how to choose the open access journals and on the, all this stuff. So I'm sure you're going to go very deep in those issues. But they're important to understand also from the perspective of IPRs, because some disadvantages, as are promoted, uh, especially by the proprietary publishing business models um, give, make a nice bridge to uh, IPR. And then when I'm going to present you what intellectual property rights mean, I will first mention the main groups of intellectual property, uh, patents, trademarks, trade secrets, and then copyright. And then I will focus more on copyright and explain you what's the copyright ab uh, all about. At the end of the lecture, you will need to make to know if you invent something, what kind of protection you can get, or if you create something, what kind of protection you, you, you can get. Then I will focus on open licenses. Um, have you ever heard about Creative Commons licenses? Yes. So we'll go through, through the Creative Commons licenses uh, and about the conditions and types, types of licenses. And then I will specifically focus uh, on exceptions and limitations in copyright. These are exceptions to the rule. And you have important exceptions for research. I will mention uh, them. And then in that context, I will talk also about text and data mining, which has now a special exception in uh, European Union directive, which needs to be transposed to national law. And then maybe. Um, will uh, some some members all some countries already have pre-existing exceptions but i think none of the country germany was is somebody from germany yes germany had has and ha, uh, will have tdm exception but now we'll implement new but otherwise we'll we'll talk about that i'm all in text and data mining later lately so i'm i need to um, stop talking about now and focus on that later. At the end, uh, these legal issues here is missing and data. I will, f I will, one slide is on data. I need to uh, convey a message to you about how data is protected and then we'll talk about some, some legal issues w uh, in managing rights on data. Uh, this is extremely important. We talk about data governance lately. I myself chair uh, a copyright, no, not working group in data governance in global partnership for artificial intelligence. These are extremely important issues and go beyond intellectual property rights. Uh, but we will just mention, briefly talk about data. I will not talk anything about software because we have the, um, the best person to introduce you to open, open licenses in software. Uh, or f uh, talk about free software will be delivered by Mattia after me. So from me, it's really important. It has everything to do with intellectual property rights, but it will not be in this talk because M Mattia will cover that. So don't judge me that I miss that. I miss that on purpose. Um, so open science, open research. Uh, I, there is no one single definition about open science probably already know that because you had some uh, opening speech about that. There is a tension to deliver some uh, one big definition that will, lay, that will probably give incentive for bigger promotion of open science. Uh, but in general, it's the movement, but it's much more than that. It's, uh, it's um, everything about transparent and accessible knowledge that is shared and developed through collaborative networks. But open science is, in some aspects, more related to um, STEAM disciplines, so more like hardcore science. Uh, colleagues who are not in this STEAM say, I'm a lawyer, so I'm, I do not belong to STEAM science. But 
open science covers everything, including arts and humanities. So some experts prefer to use the term open research, that it's for everything, not just for science, science. But it's, it's used, um, you can interchange it quasi synonymously. It's the, it's the word that I'm looking for. You can use both terms. In Norwegian countries, um, they promote more open research. European commu Commission is using open science. So now this is really the term that beca became every uh, term in our everyday life. It's, it's been having prom heavy promoting, promoted, so we use open science today. So when I talk about open research or open science, I think about the same, the same things. Open science, the primary focus is connecting all disciplines in the widespread uptake of new technologies and tools and the underlying ecology of the production, dissemination, and reception of knowledge from a research-based point of view. I took this from Wikipedia, so that's why I'm quoting this. It's not generally accepted the only definition of open science. I liked it a lot, and it, it talks about important things in open science. Uh, open science has many building blocks. The European Commission talks about um, the, f the main blocks in the discussions from uh, per perspective of researcher or the actor in, in this are um, future of scholarly communication, findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable fair data, the European Open Science Cloud, next generation metrics, new ways of evaluation, rewards and incentives, skills in open science, citizen science, research integrity, and collectively agreed code of ethics. This is a good list of dunya, whether you cover everything in this summer school. I'm sure you do. Um, uh, so um, these are the topics that are discussed, discussed by the European Commission as well. UNESCO of offered the following building blocks of open science. Um, um, so it's a little bit broader. What's interesting on this uh, picture is that it mentions also indigenous knowledge systems. Uh, so the knowledge that uh, is not or is, has not come to, to the world, I don't speak English anymore, uh, as, a, as a part of uh, create, creative and scientific projects uh, in the Western research and creative community. Um, open science has many advantages, and it's ex some of them, some researchers or some experts say that all science should be open, so we should not even talk about open science. Uh, but the main advantages of open science are open publication of research reports and data allows for much better peer-to-peer -peer review. So if articles or research papers are uh, easily accessible, all researchers can access and then detect potential problems. And this, this is much more efficient uh, system than if the, the articles are behind a paywall. Um, it is also important that if public, public funds go to research, that also the results are publicly uh, available. Um, and it's also important because it's better reprodu reproducibility of the science and it's much more transparent. It, it goes with the first line as well. And consequently, it has much uh, bigger impact because it's much uh, wider accessible, so potential impact is much bigger. And um, in during the um, huge crisis, COVID-19 was definitely demonstrates if many heads put their brain together that some complex issues are resolved much quicker. Um, it's uh, more and more the research becomes more and more complex and it's not uh, just one individual or small group is, is not possible to resolve all, all the issues anymore. On the other hand, open science has also disadvantages especially um, those who are potentially threatened with the new models of dissemination of knowledge um, highlight the disadvantages. 
uh, almost all the um, arguments um, derive from the ownership uh, and potentially of mi misuse of data. So potential misuse is that the data or the results are not used in the right way and uh, convey the wrong uh, research results to society. Um, it's also one concern that maybe general public will misunderstand the, da the data. It happened in the in the uh, Kepler um, case when NASA, NASA sent uh, launched Kepler spacecraft. They were and if the data would directly be uh, delivered to public, they were afraid that the public would interpret data wrongly. So they committed to publish data later not at the same time as they receive them, but, but later, to avoid the, the potential misunderstanding. Some uh, critiques say that it's lower quality science. It's uh, that it's um, uh, uh, not, that peer review is not as quality as in scientific uh, journals owned by, uh, or doing business in proprietary model. And some critics say that is uh, entrapment by platform cap capitalism that around open content you can build many different business ma models. Uh, it's actually um, a fair critique because we, we see that nowadays publishers are not offering access to content but are, uh, are at least are trying to offer access to scientific infrastructure and the content is just one po very attractive piece in the whole picture. So like content is available, come here, and then users come and leave all possible data and all different kind of information that then um, uh, proprietary business models use those inform information to use future services. Spark, United States did incredible research on this topic and studied how today it's not important just to offer access to content, but all other things, including data analytics, uh, together with the content. So um, some say, this is a quote from, uh, can open science be protected from the evolving regime of IPR paper, say that this conflict be, uh, led to the open science conflict be between desire of scientists on one hand to uh, have access to shared resources and uh, on the other hand entities, private entities who uh, want to close or make uh, barriers to access to those information or knowledge to uh, earn money on them. And that this was the driving force behind coming coming up with the new modes of uh, sharing uh, content, content with open licenses. It is quite obvious that this is how we got open software as a hack on a traditional um, copyright model. The same, uh, it was a similar driving force that gave birth to Creative Commons licenses. I remember that back in 1999, when I studied at Harvard Law School at that time, we didn't have open licenses. And at, at that time, we, we were already starting to discuss open government, open internet, open access. And this strange, very interesting professor, Lawrence Lessig, delivered the speech and introduced to us how suddenly, because we use computers, everything that we read or listen is, in fact, reproduction, and so becomes uh, regulated by the copyright law, which is completely different situation as in in the condition when you walk in the street and you listen to the music, you listen some somebody quoting the quoting the poem, or the colleague here, which I didn't ask the name, could easily give me the book, and I could do whatever with that book, but he, he would not be able to send me book. Uh, via email and things like that. When copyright became much, much, much bigger and every act became act of reproduction, that is one, one act that is regulated by copyright, then suddenly 
um, there are um, prohibitions of use, disseminate, make available, and so in these conditions, um, um, the, the need to open the system, to, to change traditional rule, which is all rights reserved, needed to be changed. And so this gives not the birth of open, but uh, another push that this became now a really important model. Uh, I deal with these issues now. I'm, when I was telling you this story, I, I was counting that 1999 was more than 20 years ago. And so um, it's shocking to see how today open licenses are really, really important norm and standard in research but how 20 years ago were just an interesting model that surprised every, everyone. Well, in software, this was already a norm at that time, but in a very closed community of uh, really, let's, I will not call them geeks, but people who were, who were uh, aware how software, how we were aware how important the freedoms to uh, share, to check, to rebuild, to remix are important for software. And they realized that th th uh, the software was taken away from them in this sense when software became part of the protected sub subject matter in copyright. But in other areas in content, <coughs> we have copyright since ever. Well, not since ever. We'll talk about that in a in, in minute, but more than 200 years ago is almost since ever. My kids definitely would, would say that it's from the dinosaurs' time. Anyway, so um, in open science is a new paradigm for science and knowledge. And it's this idea to make as possible uh, as open as possible is completely different than in the world of intellectual property where proper, proper intellectual property rights present barriers. They closed, close something that it's otherwise free um, to become uh, protected by property. So the tensions between open science on one hand in, and intellectual property on the other hand is very natural. But if we study them deeply, we realize that they can coexist and support each other, but the, the change needs to be done in, in policy and strategy, how you approach things. European Union took that very seriously and uh, published a very good um, study on this topic. It's mentioned here. I really recommend you also to con consult this 140 pages long study, but it's when you go deep, it's not so long, but I will definitely share the link with Dunya because after this, uh, the PowerPoint will be up, but I don't know whether we agreed, but I definitely plan to do also share a Google Doc with some links. So maybe not now, maybe not for any exam, but maybe in a couple of months or years, you will remember this and you will consult the, the Google Doc with, with, which grows in time. Uh, so, um, economics by intellectual property rights, why it's important to say that we many times talk that intellectual property rights are important for economy. Um, they are, uh, without intellectual property rights, there would be no innovation and no creation because we uh, have this economic theory on IPR is the idea that with, without this economic incentive, in terms of rights, nobody would create and nobody would uh, innovate. In the area of creation, we have the paintings in caves before any IPR, any copyright regime. We have uh, Michelangelo uh, did amazing creations without any copyright, copyright incentive. So creations were there before the people had incentives for uh, for creation and, inno and innovation. And also, like, we would not have wheels wheel, uh, when, uh, at the time when we had wheel because there were no intellectual property rights, if this would be completely true. Uh, Mark Lemley quote is here on the slides. Mark Lemley is a distinguished professor from United States. 
And basically, he says that all this vast information and data does not really support um, or, or does not support. It can go both ways that without intellectual proper, property rights, we will not have innovation. It's just, I mentioned this, that you should not take it for granted that intellectual property rights are a must, otherwise we will not have any innovation. But it's really into the vocabulary and in our habits, because sometimes we say, uh, how many inventions is in your country? And we, or how many patents? So we would measure success of, of something with the number of, not innovation, but with patents and then commercialization. So uh, the, what you need to, um, what I want to highlight is that there is no solid data that would, um, that would um, support this. So I need to check the time. There is no watch here. Okay, good. Um, so which intellectual property rights, there are many more that I will mention today, are relevant for research in general and open research in particular. Uh, patents, trademark, trade secrets, and copyright. Uh, there are other intellectual property rights like geographical indication of origin, uh, community marks, uh, des patent design models in Europe, but we are not, I'm not going to mention them. Um, uh, the focus of my talk will be on copyright. About copyright, you will need to know some basics after you leave this room, but the, the rest I will just mention. With um, trade secrets, we, um, th they are not a special IPR right, but if we design with contract the, the rules between different uh, legal or, or physical peop uh, person, then the, the secrets that we declare as secrets are uh, protected, and then if somebody breaches the agreement, also um, uh, there is a special system that, that protects uh, the person who wants the trade secrets to, to be protected. In the world of intellectual, of artificial intelligence, this is extremely important today, because we there is no definition what intellectual uh, artificial intelligence is, but from perspective of copyright, is a small uh, algorithm with usually one or two tasks and a huge amount of uh, big data. So data is not protected by copyright as such. This you will uh, you will hear from me and from Mattia as well. So in the whole thing, what is protected by copyright is just this small algorithm. So you build secrecy around and protect the whole models by trade secrets. And so the trade secrets today are more and more important. And you uh, also see the, the raise of the importance of trade secrets in trade agreements. Suddenly, this is like the, the hottest potato in uh, trade negotiations globally. So, because uh, owners of, um, of the artificial intelligence systems are aware that existing copyright or intellectual property protection does not of offer them complete protection on their models. So, in addition to uh, copyright protection of software, they rely on trained secrets. Um, in uh, non-disclosure agreements are really important agreements that also researchers, I address you as a researchers, uh, conclude uh, while they do research or while they disseminate uh, their results or while they negotiate with potential partners or investors. And in those agreements, uh, you agree about how can something be disclosed, how can something not be disclosed, and what happens if disclosure happens. So that's the whole area of trade secrets. Uh, trademarks are uh, protected signs uh, that are used to um, make difference between pr products and services on the market. Can you name some of the trademarks? You. Just go. Do you know the name of any trademarks? 
does any does any trademark come to your mind? In Maribor, you drink what kind of beer? Lashko is a trademark. <laughs> I'm sorry. I wanted to start with Coca-Cola, but that would be Im Im improper. So Heineken, Coca-Cola, Mercator, Tusch, Lidl, what else? Um, University of Maribor, I, I hope it's protected as a trademark. What else? Cocta, Mattia. This. Okay. So is it protected or not? Yes. It is. Okay. Um, you you basically mentioned now we are go a little bit different deeper in the trademark. So basic rule is trademarks are signs. It can they can be words or logos, which which if protected, are their their aim is to, uh, to distinguish uh, products and services on the market. And so whoever puts service and product on the, on the market wants to get a monopoly on that sign. So you cannot get protection of similar sign for similar products and services. Who decides what's similar? There is 45 different classes, classifications of product, products and services. So if you have a world-known trademarks like Coca-Cola, you cannot name production of chairs with Coca-Cola because Coca-Cola is a world-known, famous, famous trademark, and so you, ca you cannot get. But you have Alpina, for example, for um, skiing boots or for sauce, Jaga, uh, so, sauce, yeah. I'm, I was afraid that I'm talking about something else. Uh, and also about um, glasses for skiing. You have the same name because they belong in different classes. So in theory, if your class is different enough, the pre-existing owners of trademark will not object. So the best to explain what the role of trademark is to uh, protect consumers on the market and protect competition. So nobody else can free ride on this name. And also consumers, when they come to, to the store, if they want to buy a Radenska, they know what they're getting. So it's important guarantee of quality and protection of consumers. If somebody, want, Jiva, hi. Uh, if somebody wants to protect trademark, it needs to be distinctive from others. And of course, there are some rules what you cannot protect as, as a trademark. Uh, generic terms cannot be protected. So you cannot protect voda for water. Voda is a Slovenian expression for water. You have good water brand, Dobra Voda in Slovenia, but that's a huge mistake of the intellectual property office that grant, granted this. Yeah? No, no, no. You can have Dana for water but you cannot have water for water, okay? So you can have apple for computers, but if you produce apples, you cannot get apple for that. It, it needs to be... <laughs> you are as bad as Slovenians. <laughs> yeah. So this is, I think this is not a good decision of intellectual property office. Uh, and m many times I, uh, I am a trademark attorney myself, and startups come to me, and they are focused on one name. And usually, they pr they like to call their um, their service and product with descriptive name, so uh, Woda for Woda or uh, Apple for uh, new uh, production of apples. And it's very difficult to persuade them that they will not be granted trademark. 
And good example is this, Apple for computers. Now everybody knows that, right? But it, it was bold at that time or imaginative at that time. So um, for trademarks, it's a sign. It can be word or it can be graphic. Sometimes it can in, even be uh, uh, sound nowadays or design. These are all the forms of trademarks that go a little bit too far, to be honest. But the most common groups are sign or uh, graphic or word. If you are able to get a word mark, it's excellent because then you have protection in every form, in every color, in every font. If you have, um, if you have protection uh, in sign, only the sign in that form is protected. So um, I'm looking for uh, the name of uh, Mercator. It, Mercator is a store. Although it's it's a uh, name. It's a, it's a graphic, graphic protection, graphic trademark, because it's in that form with those letters in those colors, the trademark is protected. So uh, this is important to make a difference. Um, wh whenever you will come across trademarks, now I have uh, presentation as for startups, you need to do to be diligent enough time in, in advance because it takes some time to get protection and when you are at the market it's sometimes too late this works because intellectual thank you for the question because intellectual property rights are territorial so uh, you get copyright is for Slovenia for Hungary for Belgium for UK of course, copyright is because there is an international convention is heavily harmonized. So almost you have also almost you have very very similar protection, but it's not one copyright that protects, but you have national copyrights. For patents is the same. Patents. You have Slovenian patent, Italian, Belgium, German patent. You have patent convention in Europe, so you file one application and one procedure that uh, that evaluates whether it's uh, patentable. But at the end, you need to f to process it in every country. We don't have European one European patent, as you have United States patent or Japan patent. In Europe, you still have a bundle of patents. In, in the area of trademark, you have Slovenian trademark, but you have European trademark as well. So actually, in Europe, you can go to uh, the intellectual property office in Alicante, EUIPO, it's the name, and you file with one application, you get protection in all member states. Very efficient and very cost efficient as well. But if you file only protection for Slovenian trademark, it's protected only on Slovenian market. So you have, I don't know whether you have ALDE here, um, here you have Hofer, but if you don't have protection of Hofer in, let's say, Macedonia, then somebody else can use that, that name there in that market. Of course, Internet made these things much more complicated. Yes? When it was registered, it was probably probably they probably probably uh, chose the classes. But now this is a global famous trademark, so no way that you would be able to get anything called Adidas. Not water, not store, not uh, nothing. So they have uh, because when you file, then um, the copyright office takes a look whether there are some absolute reasons that they deny the protection of trademark, like that it's a general generic name and things like that, and it's not, or it's not, uh, uh, or it's descriptive. But then, when this is published, all pre-existing owners of trademarks can object. So, if, for example, you would have one trademark, and I would apply for similar trademark that would be 
for example, you would be producing clothes, I would be producing clothes, and you, your name would be um, Madeline, and I would, I would register Madelinita, you would say, no, 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 Maya, this is too close. And you would object in procedure, and I would not get the trademark. So this is, these are all technicalities. In open science, all those some signs are protected by trademark. They, it's not important area. You can say that this would not inhibit open science almost in no matter. Actually, it's good to understand the trademark, that you protect the trademark, and then you defend the protected signs for certain area. area. That's only Creative Commons can use Creative Commons. And it's important because then uh, that nobody else can free write or misuse that for any other purposes. Uh, patents, on the other hand, are different kind of of beast. Uh, with uh, patents, if somebody um, invents solution for technical problem, not for business model or something, for technical problem, it can be granted a patent by intellectual property office if the invention is considered new, novel, it, ha it presents uh, inventive steps, and it's, it comes from a certain uh, groups of industry. Um, the patent office evaluates those criteria very carefully. For example, in Slovenia, our patent office does not evaluate whether the invention is novel, because you, can, you need to consider all, inven all inventions globally, and does not evaluate whether there is inventive step. What does inventive step mean? If you would, lay persons, we, uh, we usually understand this in the following way. If you would close scientists in a room and leave the scientists for a couple of days with suitable research equipment in that room, the scientists would not come, um, would not come up with this idea. So whoever comes up with this idea it makes this inventive step. And so the idea why society decides to grant patents, it's because the inventor needs to disclose very carefully how the, what's the invention all about. So it discloses um, all, all the information about invention. It gets monopoly that lasts for 20 years. But after the expiry of patent, this knowledge becomes public domain. Everybody can produce, export, uh, do whatever with, with the technology. Um, and now I will move to copyrights because I need to go there. Um, and finally start to talk about the topics that are really, that will go into more de detail. Um, aim of copyright economic theory is to give incentive to create to reward authors. That philosophy comes from the continental, uh, Euro continental uh, European legal system uh, or philosophy, and also stimulate dissemination of knowledge. So it gives also this uh, incentive to disseminate, to put on the market, to publish. Um, what I always try to explain, especially to our copyright office, in here in Slovenia, it's not only about trade. Copyright regulates um, different activities, not just trading activities. It's, so it's important for research, education, for um, uh, libraries, museum ar archives. It um, makes a huge consequences on their business. Today, today, for the last 20 years, a huge challenges are digitalization and global communication networks uh, and urge for rebalancing of legislation. The hottest topic today in copyright, there are more, but I, I will mention two, is whether artificial intelligence produced works will be copyright protected as well. They look like they, they are um, produced by humans but they are produced by machines. And the core of copyright is to give incentive to create to, hum to humans. So are we going to change the core of 
copyright because of uh, the new economic realities. That's one huge challenge. And the second huge challenge is whether data will be soon, sooner or later protected by something that looks like copyright. The big owners of data um, today want to make data available and earn from, from making those data available. But today, pure data is not protected by copyright. So if data is published, everybody can use data. There is no special IPR rights on raw data and facts. And one of the challenges that's always is copyright management in whatever form it takes. So um, copyright is a set of exclusive material and moral rights. When author, when a person, physical person, not an animal, not a machine, when physical person, human, creates something uh, like novel, poem, draws a picture, uh, writes a, com a software a computer program, it, on this expression of the idea, the physical person gets a copyright in terms of material right and moral rights. Material rights are right to reproduction, right to distribution, right of make, making available, right of communication of public, right to make derivative works, that means to change the work, including translation, and, um, and some other similar rights. Different legal system list rights differently. Our legal system, our Slovenian legal system, makes a very detailed detailed list of rights. Our right of distribution, for example, encompasses only physical distribution of copies. So it's not distribution on internet. So if you sometimes conclude copyright agreements and you say it's Slovenian law and there is a right on distribution that, can, that regulates also distribution on internet because you just copy, translated, pasted contract from internet, that's not very well. So you need to know these details. As I said before, copyright is heavily harmonized. Different countries has, have very, very similar copyright l rules because we have Berne Convention, which is older, older than old peace conventions. It, it's date 19, no, 18, 19, 1876. I will, I will tell it in this way. So it's much older, it's more than 100 years old. And many countries are signatories of that conventions, convention, so there is a huge harmonization of copyright globally. And so, and why we have copyright? Of course, this idea that it's necessary, as I mentioned before, incentive reward, but it's also social value, value in a way. It's a social agreement. Uh, cr creators are important, so we will give the, them this incentive to create or this reward, and um, we will get the knowledge that, uh, and with this knowledge, the society will become richer and better. This slide is important to learn all the copyright basics that are necessary for today. So, author is a physical person. Remember that. My dog sings beautifully when the church bells ring, but she will never get any copyright on her creation, on her music. The same as for computer. And creator creates work. And in copyright law here in Slovenia, we have a list of works. The list is not in exclusive. So, uh, on that list are, as I mentioned before, computer programs, novels, poems, uh, so literary work, um, artistic work, music work, and similar. The list is not conclusive. So basically, multimedia work is not mentioned there, but multimedia um, is in many cases, almost in all case, cases, protected by copyright. So when author creates a work, it gets moral rights and economic rights. Moral rights are right to attribution that somebody is called or recognized as being author of, of this particular work. This right of attribution is up to the author whether it would be, I can decide whether I'll sign myself as Maya Bogata Jancic or Maya B or Maya the B or nothing. It's also, this is also the 
right of attribution. I had a case where the painter was involved in very com in commercial product and he didn't want to be mentioned. And he exercised his moral right to attribution not to be mentioned on a certain commercial product. So it's up to the author to decide. Another moral right in, is integrity of the work. So uh, the case from the practice was that painter painted the front page of a book, but then the printer did something wrong with the color, and the artist said it's all zdriza rumene barve, so it's all a mess in yellow color. And he said um, it goes against the integrity of the work, so the printer needed to change the front change. Access to the sole work and anomatives, um, this I explain in the right of attribution. In our legal system, we have some additional uh, moral rights because we come from the legal tradition where we put heavy weight on moral rights, uh, the same as, in, for example, in French. So uh, we have also the right that the author decides whether or when to put work on the market. So, for example, I would visit Dunya, and she would say, oh, Maya, you know, I write some poems in the evenings, and I will read that poems and, poems, and I would say, oh, my God, Dunya, this is really great. You need to publish that. And she would say, no, no, she would be shy, and I would take poems from her and publish myself. That would be heavy breach of moral right of Dunya. So you cannot, you cannot do that. So... The list of moral rights is different from country to, co to country. I mentioned the most important ones in addition to those also like particular Slovenian moral rights. On, on the side of economic rights, the most important are right to reproduction. That's right to copy, to reproduce the whole part or ju uh, just a small part, it's copying. That's right of ret ret uh, reproduction. Distribution is in Slovenian law distributing, sending around physical copies, not in electronic form. It can be uh, electronic copy on the disk, that's still distribution. But if you send electronic copy via email, it's not distribution, it's making available. Making available is part of public, general term, public communication. We have the whole sets of um, smaller rights under the big term public communication for all Slovenians. Javna priopčitov is public communication. Making available is dajanje na voljo javnosti. I'm just repeating some terms for Slovenian colleagues that they will be able to distinguish them. I have no idea how to say them in German, Greek, maybe Serbian. <laughs> uh, so um, these rights are unwaivable according to Slovenian legal system. You cannot write these rights away with contract. Even if you do, the contract is null and vo void. So if I would agree with Mattia, for example, that he, will, he would write, ah, no, I would write his autobiography. And then he would publish the book, Mattia Chocle, written by Mattia Chocle. The book would be complete success, and then I would change my mind. Although we would have a uh, contract, I would be successful in court and would get, be granted that I could sign my name under your book, and you would probably need to change some, some issues. Even if, yeah. Oh, even if we say all the rights, or even if we sign the contract that I sign away my moral right, that's according to our system. If we would say that the contract between us is regulated by US law, here it's a different, um, perspective or different regulation of moral right, the contract would be would not be null and void. So you have the, you need to understand these particularities, although there are huge similarities between between different legal regimes. So and of course economic rights, we call it material copyrights. Materialne autorske pravice in Slovenian. You can sign away those rights or you can allow you can give license to others that they can use those rights. That's that's difference. If you si if you sign away rights, if you assign rights, that means that I don't have these rights anymore. But just the person that I conclude contract with has those rights. In assignments, we know 
exclusive and non-exclusive assignment. Exclusive means if I would give right to Mattia, I would not have the, that right anymore. And if I would want to use a particular article, imagine I would write article, he would be publisher, we would conclude contract, and then I would say, oh, I want to publish that on my website. I would need to ask him for permission. If I sign non-exclusive agreement, then he can use it and I can use it. Is Voli? This part of rights are inherited because the copyright lasts 70 years after the authors die. So it doesn't expire when the author die, dies, but it lasts life plus 70. So it's extremely important to know that even if the person dies, you still have economic rights. So the uh, ancestors, the heirs, decide who can use that or not. And that's a very important issue also for open science, because usually the creators, people who created creations, are usually much more user-friendly than heirs. When author creates a work, it needs that this work is communicated to public, that public sees the work, that criticizes the work, that communicates their opinions about the work. So, of course, it wants a share remuneration or a fair remuneration for that, like it wants living from, from there, but not necessary. But heirs, they usually see uh, the material or the economic right as, as pure commodity. And so even in mass digitalizations problem here in Slovenia, we have serious issues with some heirs of the creators. Um, especially art galleries here in Slovenia, there is particular family that has a huge problems with one ear. So uh, it's much more, much more difficult for, uh, much more easy for creators to understand the importance of open science, of open sharing, than for um, people who own uh, copyright but have, um, did not create the work. The same goes also in many cases for the holders of copyright because the copyright can be the, the author creates and gets rights on the work. But of course, material copyrights can be transferred to another person by contract. So when you sign a publishing contract, if it's exclusive transfer, then you don't own the, the material copyright on that work anymore. Um, the publisher owns owns that right, um, and so it's also important when we, we, I'm, I'm looking at um, at Dunya. It's not really open science, but it's important part of open science, open educational resources, including digitalization of content content that's owned by libraries. In many cases or in many projects, um, some of the project managers say, oh, we contacted the author of that book, and they say, okay, it's okay to use. First, you need to know who has the copyright. Is copyright still with the author, or did uh, author transfer the copyright to someone else? Because then you need to ask that person if it's exclusive transfer of copyright. If it's non-exclusive, then you can ask the author as well. So, and that's not... Um, the problem with the copyright is that there is no public register that you can go there and you consult, oh, who owns the copyright on, on this and that. For patents, there is public registry. For trademark, there is public re registry. Trademarks, it's a whole different world. But for copyright, it, even if you see the book, it's not entirely clear uh, who owns the copyright. Or in special category are orphan works. These are works that you know that copyright that there is still copyright because it's it's impossible that the authors would be dead for more than 70 years because maybe technology didn't exist before, and photographies are usually this type of art, and but no, you don't know who owns the copyright because there is no public register. But can you 
freely put that on online or use? No, because the general rule in copyright is all rights reserved. So when you find something, a work on online, the general rule for that work is you can't use that unless you have a legal ground in exceptions and limitations, or there is a license that regulates how the work can be used. So, um, uh, it's written who owns the copyright, but sometimes you don't know whether the copyright is still, does still exists. Because it's not written in the book whether the author is, has died. It's really a problem in copyright. I, I've helped National Library in digitalization process. And our national libraries, before they were libraries in Yugoslavia, in one common country, then now we have uh, more independent countries. And we, we had no idea what happened with copyright. And at the beginning, we didn't even know when the certain author died. And you needed to have two information and, legal, information and legal interest to find out with the municipality when the author died. So we knew that the authors were very dead, very old. <laughs> but we, <laughs> well, actually, we knew that they died very long ago, but we didn't know exactly whether the work is still in public domain. Uh, yeah, but a lot of work. A lot of work for lawyers, which means very costly. Um, every time the lawyer is put on the project, very costly. Okay, so let's use this case to, uh, we have only 10 minutes, so we, in one minute we'll discuss this case. In th this case, it was probably about the name. It, they objected commercialization of the name of, the, of that person, so that was the issue. Completely different question is whether the library that was donated uh, letters, maybe some CDs or recordings also has has rights. So I will highlight also this. If I own the painting, I don't own copyright on that painting. I have beautiful painting at home. Can I put it on t-shirt and on notebooks and start selling that? No. I'm owner of the object, but not owner of the copyrights on that object. So in this case, if there would be, uh, if the festival would use a song and the festival would say, oh no, uh, library gave permission to use this song, this would be a good example about the copyright. But you have different legal problem. You have usage of commercialization of name, which in this case, the person is not alive anymore, so it's in, certain, in, one, in one type of legacy. Usually you want to resolve the issue, although probably they would not win in court. That's an interesting issue. But now I need to give the whole issue which I, I need to present, all that I need to present today. So copyright basics. Physical person, human, creates a work. It's protected for life plus 70 years. On that work, it gets moral rights and material rights. Moral rights, you can't s sign away. Also, the heirs don't get this, while uh, material right is of transferable. You can sell the right or assign, transfer, give license. Uh, so when user came into the picture, can use certain copyright only if it's under exception and limitation like quotation, parody, educational uses in some cases. Text and data mining, we'll talk, to, we'll talk about that in a couple of minutes. 
or if the work, which is still protected by copyright, is put on the market with suitable license. Otherwise, or if it's not protected anymore. So if the work is still protected, you can only use it if you fulfill the conditions of exceptions. And one important exception is quotation. So in some cases, when you want to criticize or you want to compare, you can use part of the work, and in some cases, the whole work for, for the purposes of quotation, but then you need to name the source. This is just one of exceptions, but there are many in there are many in the law. But if there is no exception, then you you need to get a license. Creative Commons licenses are licenses prepared in advance by lawyers that the copyright owners, authors, or copyright holders can use to manage their copyrights. So if you are preparing something or you're publishing your, your research paper and you want to use a photo in that, you can use it as a quotation. If you, if you use it as decoration in your research paper, you can't do that, even if it's very small photo. But if you use it as a comparison, critique, or something like that, then, then you can use the whole photo or you can use small text. Or if you find a photo that is licensed under suitable license, then if you fulfill the conditions of, the, of that license, you can use that photo. So um, about CC licenses, before we end, uh, there are three layers of licenses. There are four licenses elements and six Creative Commons licenses. And nowadays, we also have uh, CC0 and public domain dedication in Slovenia where you, you cannot give away moral right. You, in fact, if you don't specify that you are relying on United States you, in a, a, on a law that allows that, you cannot use creative uh, public domain dedication because it need, you need to respect attribution. And CC licenses and copyright exceptions, they... Uh, they do not affect copyright exceptions and limitations. So if a usage is allowed under copyright exception and limitations, you don't need Creative Commons licenses of that. Um, co uh, if you will breach Creative Commons license and it will go to court, everybody will read a legal uh, lawyer readable text. That's the binding text, but it comes also in a human readable form with the little icons that also lay people understand what's all about. And of course, also machines recognize. So if you type in photo cat CC license, something will come up. Probably cats are really popular with machines, so cat will come up, maybe not a dog. Um, so these are the main elements in Creative Commons licenses. Buy is attribution, share alike, so attribution is we already mastered that, right? Attribution, you need to name who is the author of the work. Share alike is a condition that whoever um, uses the licenses decides whether, whether a person will need uh, to share derivative work under the same condition. Non-commercial is that they allow all usage, but not for commercial purposes. And no derivative is you can use the work, but don't do any remix or any derivative. With combination, um, with combination of these this, uh, conditions, you get six different licenses. It is worth mentioning that at the beginning, back in 2004, I did adaptation of Creative Commons licenses for Slovenia. At that time, buy was an option. So, when, you, when a copyright holder was deciding which license to use, buy was an option. Because in great majority, the co Creative Commons licenses users always chose buy. Now it's a, a must condition. So every Creative Commons license has this attribution con condition. Um, the as I mentioned before, the Creative Commons licenses and public domain, this is um, this is now a CC0, which means the copyright holder waives all the rights. In Slovenia, you can't, the copyright is one and single. Uh, you can't waive away moral rights, so you can't really use 
this license, according to Slovenian. This makes huge different, huge difficulties for open science, because in some documents, strategic documents of European Union, the CC0 is a recommend, recommended license, and then we are frustrated because because we need to realize that our our legal system is a little bit um, limited in this form. Mattia, you are not allowed to ask a question. Uh, as I mentioned before, exceptions and limitations are not affected by Creative Commons licenses. Uh, EU copyright reform, that's the final thing, um, is happening right now. It started in 2016. The, in 2019, the huge directive was adopted, a directive on copyright and related rights, hugely important for research and also for education and cultural heritage institutions because it has the whole set of exceptions um, that are in this directive for all non-Europeans and also for all European st students here. Directive is a legal instrument that gives direction to member states how to implement this directive in their law. So when directive is implemented, the national state takes this directive and implements it in national law. Not necessary copy, translate, paste. It happens much more. Sometimes it can be expanded in the direction that the directive set. Regulation is another instrument of European Union. Uh, GDPR uh, is regulation. Nowadays, they are called acts. Regulation are directly applicable. So when European Union adopts regulation, since that moment when regulation becomes valid, is valid also in Slovenia. So you don't need to copy, translate, do something, and paste in our, in our law. Um, so um, very hugely important exception, exception for text and data mining is in this directive. It was necessary to implement this directive because some EU member states had exceptions before, some not, but for, but for functioning of single market, that's extremely important for European uh, economy, uh, it is important to harmonize this area. You wanted to ask a question? No. Um, so it's important not to have fragmented market, and also it's important for Europe to be able to compete with other regions on the world. United States has text and data mining under fair use. Japan has exception. Israel has exception. So if you really want to be superpower in, in artificial intelligence that uh, Europe definitely wants to be, you need to have exception for text and data mining in copyright. Now you will ask, because you're careful students, why the hell we need this exception? Because in text and data mining, we are looking for facts and maybe ideas, and facts and ideas are not protected by copyright. Well, because of legal certainty, because in, there may be some elements that um, can be protected by copyright, or when computer ent enters the library and does the whole reproduction of the library, maybe there is, in the, there is an economic value in that. So to increase legal certainty for researchers, this exception needed to be uh, implemented. We got two in the directive, exception for researchers and exceptions for all others. Exceptions for researcher is really important. It is uh, mandatory. So if research institution, research institution and cult cultural heritage institutions are beneficiaries of those exceptions, if those institutions buy access to content, they can text and data mine it. So you don't need another license. It's a huge um, change of the future for publishers. I will use this word because they were aiming to, to be able to sell special licensing for text and data mining as well. But now we have this exception for researchers, for commercials, commercial and non-commercial research. So wh whatever license you buy to access to el electronic users, resources, the institution and the patrons of it, the institution, mean, meaning the members can do text and data mining. On, uh, for all the others, it's not mandatory. So that means if the copyright owners prohibit uh, text and data mining, those entities can't do it. So 
startups, corporations, NGOs, journalists that are not researchers can't do it. Um, the directive, it was huge negotiation. The, the exceptions are not optimal, so there are still some rooms for improvement. Um, I was really engaged in studying shortcomings of TDM, and I, I worked on guidelines how to best implement text and data mining in Europe. I worked that for Communia. And so, um, for example, there is missing um, the researchers cannot digitalize analog object according to DSM, but they can do that according to InfoSoc, so it's very good for national countries to adopt that. Or like this, 27 hours was proposed, uh, 72 hours was proposed as a sort of, like Dunya would buy um, access to all the electronic resources, and then researchers will, would start to text and data mine, and suddenly the whole system would collapse or the servers would not work. And so if this would be in the law, Dunya would say, hello, I am, have a license to that. My, uh, my researchers can't use that. You have seven, two hours to give me access. Or you will, you will um, need to pay some penalty. When I buy Netflix, if net Netflix don't work, I call Netflix. So it's completely understandable if you buy access to, to um, to electronic resources if you are not allowed to do text and data mining that the copyright holders need to respond. There were research done on this topic in UK which had exception before and researchers were really in big trouble although they had exceptions um, the technolo technology was uh, stopping them was this was, was not enabling them to uh, benefit from the exception. You raised your hand If you don't have exception and limitation to text and data mining, you need to get license to use all the works that you, you need to text and data mine. It's impossible to get. So the research is, the exception is needed. That if you have access to all this material that you can freely do uh, text and data mining for research purposes. It would be impossible to get a license for all the works. We are talking about machine learning systems. Uh, it's so the exception was needed, especially because the researchers in the United States, in Japan, Israel, and some other countries were able to do that. So huge competitive uh, question compared to other jurisdictions globally. So if this would not be done in Europe, researchers would move because of this or businesses w w would move. That was the economic reason for this. And so uh, there are a couple of improvements that need to be done. Slovenian, uh, Slovenia, Slovenia is right now, right today, uh, in the parliament adopting uh, all the, uh, the whole directive, including text and data mining exception. And also, hopefully, Slovenia will get a general exception for research which is based on directive from 2001, and Slovenia never got that exception for research. So uh, hopefully there are some uh, better times for Slovenia. Um, the responsible ministries were heavy negotiating to get good text and data mi mining exception, and they, were, they managed to get some improvements. But the Copyright Office, which is not the uh, friend of the researchers, uh, on the front of copyright reform, uh, did uh, define the legal access to work. Uh, Dunya and the, her institution needs, why I'm talking to, you know Dunya, right? Uh, they need to have uh, legal, legal access to that, and in our proposal for legislation, legal access is defined not to include open web. They forgot, I don't know how, mentioned open web, which is many good things were were uh, are put in that proposal, but they forgot about open web, which would be huge disaster. What means open web? Access to websites 
that are that the access is not protected by technological measures but of course content on the website if it fulfills the creative criteria is protected by copyright so it, it would be a huge problem in, if this would not be can you please tell me about the hour ne sam prosim ćemo na tanchen čas da mi ne bo slučaj o shit anyway so uh, hopefully in the future there will, there will be a global uh, right to research because I, i'm talking about text and data mining that's taking place in europe while it's not not taking place in serbia or it's not sorry to in european union it's not taking place in latin america or it's not taking place in africa in those territories but i just mentioned serbia because i'm looking at you but in especially problematic is in latin america or in africa there is no right to research no exception for the research in copyright so the licenses need to be bought or otherwise huge legal uncertainty so uh, i will conclude with the legal issues and data Owner, ownership of data i will just conclude with this sentence if you own data you can protect data you cannot disclose data but if data is made pub publicly available it's not pr pure data is not protected by any intellectual property right and not by copyright so there is a huge tension now uh, on the global scale of politics to put some sort of intellectual property right property right on data but currently not but very quickly there is sui generis database right or if there is a original database it can be protected by copyright there may be some elements on that so there is a huge tension from the researcher side as well to use licenses on data although on pure data you don't need any licenses because it's not protected by any copyright law but researchers sometimes are lazy they just want a very easy signal that they can use that so they prefer to have a clear license than just raw data and of uh, just data as such and understand the whole difficult issues or consult lawyers that can be real pain in the ass and of course there is also huge tension from the owners of data huge corporate owners to uh, put property right on that data and so this will be it for today this slide that i will not explain today uh, i will send a link for the paper that you will be able to consult about this issue that i'm not mentioning specifically specifically today so um, this will be it from me i barely speak english today i don't know what's going on um you i didn't use any communication with you we are um, previous speaker took important piece of my time i am sorry um i hope you got something from that if you have more questions than answers then i've done my job because these are extremely difficult issues uh and you cannot be expert on patents if you're expert on copyright you cannot be uh, expert on legal issues if you're expert on some other scientific fields so this will will be from me for last i will open the floor for some quick questions any questions no i'm uh this is my email i'm i respond to emails but please uh, uh, say in subject open science summer school or write in email i reply to emails if you will seek for legal opinion i will send you terms and conditions i'm joking uh no but all these questions especially i'm extremely friendly to students and researchers i will um i will send you some links or uh, give you some answers. And last question is for Germany. Right? Okay, go. Yes. Um you have CC 2.5, CC 3.5 maybe or I don't know. And now we have CC 4.0. CC it's a new generation of creative commons licenses in the newest generation for your work use that license. It's international license. Well, it's based on it's not it was in the past the licenses were not just translated but adopted to to Slovenia to 
the legal system. So CC 2.5 Slovenian is adopted to Slovenian law. This is international version. It's easier to defend potentially in court. Use this one uh, for your work. But every time, if you have some conditions that you need to use compatible licenses, uh, you need to check, check this. And for for the last, because I didn't mention, you talk sometimes about open licenses and free licenses. Open licenses are CC BY, CC SHARE alike. That are really open licenses that enable to freely share your results and also uh, do other stuff with that. Other Creative Commons license, licenses are not considered as open. If you have non-derivative, non-commercial condition, that restricts what you can do with that. This is the final message from me. Thank you very much. I wish you all the best with your studies. Send questions. I feel guilty that I'm not able to commu communicate with you, but I'll make up for it um, in, the, in the future. Next week, I'm not here, uh, but after 26th of September, really, you're welcome. This is all for today. And thank you again for Dunia.